Good morning, members. I trust that you can all hear my voice. It is now nine o'clock. I'm Regan Allen, Chairperson for Community Safety, Cultural Affairs and Sport um, in, the, um, in the Western Cape Provincial Parliament. We have our members logged in, as well as Mr. Jay Brandt, the Western Cape Police Ombudsman, and his team. We are awaiting General Mangi um, of SAPS, who is the SAPS Provincial Commissioner on Policing. We would have Advocate Yasina Pillay, the Acting HOD for Community Safety in the province, as well as departmental staff. Members, we also have Ms. Lucinda Evans, the director of Palisa Abafazi Betu Women's Center, as well as other guests in attendance, as well as those following on the YouTube broadcast. Please feel welcomed. Before we commence, I'll allow members to introduce themselves for the record. Over to you, members. Good morning, Chairperson Lorraine Boita. Yeah. Okay. Good morning, Chairperson. For Christians. Thank Good you. morning, Chairperson. Uh, member Musuli Kama. Thank you. I've noted Member Bosman online as well. Are you there, Member Bosman? Good morning, Chairperson. Yes, I am. Thank you, sir. We will. Um, just before we, again, I want to reiterate the rules of engagement, especially for our guests. Again, the rules of engagement for our virtual committee meetings. As you would all be aware now that all members and guests are to be muted at the beginning of the meeting. This is to avoid any background noises. Um, what we will also then like to communicate is that if you would like to speak or ask a question, please use the hand, um, the raise your hand function. Also, once you have done so, please lower your hand once your question or comment has been made. I will also encourage members and other guests on the platform this morning is to please, all videos and audio must be switched off to improve the quality of the connection. However, like I stated, if a member or a departmental official is speaking, they may put on their mic or their video. Participants must switch off their mics once they have finished speaking. Lastly, I would like to draw your attention to the directors for the sitting of the House or meetings of committees in this way. Section 10 of the directors of the ATC that has been ATC on the 17th of April speaks to the application of the standing rule. Rule 10 states that in the instances where these directors are not clear and do not cover a particular eventuality in respect of a sitting or of a meeting like we are having now by, by means of video conferencing, the standing rules must apply as far as it is reasonably and practically possible. And in instances, members, where they cannot be applied, the ruling by the chairperson or the presiding officer will then be final. Just to set the context for today, we are receiving a briefing on a report conducted by the Western Cape Police Ombudsman with regard to a complaint that has been lodged by Ms. Lucinda, De, um, by Ms. Lucinda Evans, the director of Police Abafazi Betu Women's Center. Many of you would be familiar with her work. She's been a champion for women rights and advocating for women, not only here in our province, but across South Africa. Ma'am, please feel welcome. We will be allowing you an opportunity later on to provide input specifically to the report. We also have, like I stated, Mr. Brandt and his team with us. We will now double check the attendance again, and I've not noted any alternates that is standing in for any member, but our capable procedural officer will note an apology that has been received from Minister Albert Fritz. However, the acting HOD will be with us between now and 10 o'clock. Any other apologies, members? If there's no other apologies, we will then sit again, like I stated, 
we will receive a briefing. The report has been circulated to all the members as well as a PowerPoint that speaks specifically to the report. Mr. Brandt will then be presenting the report. I'll then hand over to the South African Police Service, who will then provide a response in terms of the recommendations. Thereafter, we will go straight to hand over to Ms. Evans for her input in terms of the report. And thereafter, I'll allow for questions and input from members. I trust that you all find this in order. On that note, Mr. Brandt and your team, please feel welcomed. I will now hand over directly to you in order to introduce your team and then to present your, your briefing to the committee, to the guests, and to those that are watching via YouTube. Please feel welcomed. We always appreciate your attendance here and looking forward to our engagement. Over to you, Ombudsman. Chairperson and the honourable members of the committee, the acting HOD, um, the um, acting provincial commissioner of the South African Police Service, um, the complainant in this matter, Ms. Uh, Lucinda Evans, um, other members present, and then um, the members of my team, uh, Mr. Chair, please allow me to introduce them quickly. Uh, I am Juan Brandt, I'm the Western Cape Police Ombudsman. With me, I have our head of office, Ms. Uh, Nadia Arabi, and I can also announce today to the team that unfortunately, Ms. Arabi will leave us at the end of this month. Um, she got another uh, appointment um, in the city of Cape Town. And then with us is Ms. Deidre uh, Forster, the head of our communication and internal marketing. She will also be the acting uh, head of um, the office from the 1st of next month. And then, uh, Mr. Chair, I've got uh, the senior investigator with me, Mr. Gernikosi Matwa, as well as Ms. Uh, Geraldine Isaacs, the head of administration at our office. And then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow the senior investigator in this matter, Ms. Abigail Lewis, as well as the two uh, ladies, Ms. Uh, Honorable Hans, I know you will enjoy this, that um, we have only appointed three ladies to lead this investigation. So Ms. Lewis will be leading this. And then Ms. Shanae Dunn was the leading investigator. And then they were supported by Ms. Uh, Suzette Dunn. So with your permission, Honorable Chairperson, I'm going to uh, ask that they will conduct the presentation and they will start doing that uh, immediately. Over to you, um, Ms. Lewis, with your permission. All in order. All in order. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, Abby, then you can continue, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, good morning, Honorable Chairperson. Good morning, honorable members of the committee. This is Shawnee Dunn speaking. I'll commence with the presentation and then I will hand over to my colleagues as well. Once again, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to present our findings on the SAPS Victim Empowerment Program. Without further ado, we'll then continue and start. So as mentioned by the Honourable Chairperson, our office received a com complaint from Ms. Lucinda Evans in her capacity as the Director of Polisa Abafazi Betu. The complaint made specific reference to allegations of policing inefficiency of the Victim Empowerment Program at Caledon and Swellendam SAPS respectively. The complaint was investigated in terms of section 16.1 and 17.1 of the Community Safety Act and request for comments were gazetted in terms of section 17.3 of the Act and these comment, 
quiz was published, publicized in social media and media platforms respectively. During the course of our investigation, we considered the mandate of the SAPS as it is set out in Section 205 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. As to the nature of the investigation, it was essentially to determine whether there are systemic problems with regards to the services offered by the SAPS within the Western Cape. We drew, we drew specifically on the National Instruction 2 of 2012. We also considered by and large the writings of the former and late Minister of Social Development, Dr. Zola Squeya. What Squeya submits in South Africa's victim empowerment policy is that this victim empowerment is based largely on the concept of restorative justice. And that is to say that its aim is to restore the dignity of those victims who were once shamed, dismantled, and brutalized by the criminal justice system. We viewed the submissions of Squeia against the SAPS's policing mandate. <laughs> Yet again, the objective of this investigation was to determine whether in the cu current di diaspora of the SAPS in the Western Cape, their victim empowerment program is sufficient. Now, our office considered two very important documents. The first being the South African Victim Empowerment Policy or Manual to your left, and to the right, SAPS's Victim Empowerment manual. I'll start with SA Victim Empowerment Policy or Manual to your left. Now, Victim Empowerment Services pre-1996 was rendered by and large by NGO services wor working with women and, and children. This, however, changed with the adoption by government of the National Crime Prevention Strategy. Post-1996, South Africa started to prioritize the implementation of support services or structures for victims. Under this new policy, the SAPS was provided with guidelines on how to deal with victims. The proposals submitted in this policy included SAPS is to provide professional and sensitive treatment to victims during the taking of statements. B, inform victims of their rights and refer them to victim support services. C, provide regular feedback on cases to victims. And D, training to be provided to SAPS personnel with regards to victim empowerment services, and lastly, establish victim-friendly rooms at the respective police stations. In parallel response to South Africa's victim empowerment policy, SAPS's victim empowerment manual aims to integrate the concept of victim empowerment with police practices and procedures, Secondly, to provide standards and guidelines for the establishment of the victim empowerment policy. And thirdly, to provide minimum standards for services offered to victims of crime. Now, during the course of our investigation, we conducted several interviews with different stakeholders in an effort to obtain their response to the subject matter at hand. Firstly, and most importantly, we interviewed Ms. Lucinda Evans. During the interview, Ms. Evans highlighted 
the scourge of gender-based violence in the community. She drew on specific examples of gender-based violence matters in Stellenbosch, Caledon, and Athlone. She once again re-emphasized the defective application of, victim, of the Victim Empowerment Program at Caledon SAPS and Swellendam SAPS. Our office also interviewed Lieutenant Colonel Paul Sir in his capacity as the provincial section head of vulnerable groups and the victim empowerment program. Now, during the course of our investigation with Colonel Paul Sir, the nature of the investigation was explained. We provided him with a questionnaire wherein we sought SAPS's response in terms of Regulation 5 of the Western Cape Police Ombudsman's regulations. An important submission made by Colonel Paulter during this interview was that our office is to draw a definitive distinction between general administrative complaints viewed against member-centric or individual complaints. Our office also interviewed several victim empowerment program volunteers attached to the respective stations. Now, the most poignant submission received from volunteers was one from Plettenberg Bay SAPS. This specific volunteer highlighted various examples showcasing SAPS's lack of assistance when dealing with victims of abuse and or sexual abuse. Our office also interviewed a registered nurse from Swellendam Public Hospital. The nurse's concerns centered around SAPS's lack of confidentiality and privacy when transporting victims to their medical facility. She also highlighted that certain volunteers failed to refer rape victims to service providers in order to attain the requisite counseling services. We also interviewed several victims and drew on the testimony of those victims and found that the, the common thread amongst all is how they were treated or how they were subjected to secondary victimization at the hands of the SAPS. In order to make a finding on the efficacy and sufficiency of SAPS's victim empowerment program, our office conducted physical inspections on the various rooms attached to the SAPS. Our findings drew our findings drew by and large on a 2018, excuse me, I'm just having some technical difficulty. There we go. Our findings drew on a 2018 provincial policing needs and priority report or PNP report. The report contained a presentation by Lieutenant Colonel Paul, sir, who submitted that frontline service officials will need to be trained so as to assist victims of crime in an effective manner and thereby preventing secondary victimization. For purposes of this investigation, secondary victimization is defined as the insensitive treatment of a victim by a member of the criminal justice system and includes the blaming of the victim for the offence perpetrated. The purpose of victim-friendly room <clears throat> is to give victims of intimate violence an opportunity to make their statements in a private and non-threatening environment. What this next slide shows is a graphical illustration of our findings with regard to the inspections conducted in terms of Section 11 
of National Instruction 2 of 2012. As you will note from this table, as well as all subsequent tables which we will be presenting to you, some areas, in some areas, the sum percentage does not add to 100%. This can be attributed to spoilt indicators where yes and no questions were answered as non-applicable. Non Now, what the data revealed from the previous slide is that there is a high compliance with SAPs in having a victim-friendly room or an alternative room for purposes of consulting. We measured compliance of Swellendam and Caledon SAPS, and in doing so, we once again drew on a study by the Department of Community Safety, which was conducted in the 2019 and 2020 financial year. This study concluded that both stations, Swellendam and Caledon SAPS, have between six to seven trained victim empowerment volunteers, and there are no major challenges highlighted. What our investigation revealed is that, yes, Swellendam SAPS is largely compliant. However, when conducting inspections at Caledon SAPS, we found that the station was sorely lacking in terms of sections 11 and 10 of National Instruction 2 of 2012. An example is that there are no burglar bars present in the outbuilding the registers which are required are missing or incomplete. And in general, the outhouse building was found to be untidy. As to Bradarsdorp SAPS, our office visited this station on the precipice of DOCSIS study, which reported that Bradarsdorp has the has the largest incidence of domestic violence in the Overberg cluster. On the day of our visit, the victim empowerment coordinator was on annual leave. However, we were allowed to see the room, but the scrutinizing of the physical documentations, i.e. the registers and the lists, could not occur as these were inaccessible to other members of staff and ourselves. Now the slide before you shows our findings against the findings of the SAPS with regards to inspections conducted in terms of section 10 of National Instruction 2 of 2012. And this speaks to the physical equipment which is to be in the in the victim friendly room. Our findings are to the right of the slide and that of SAPS is to the left. Now in scrutinizing the data, what we see is that there are significant and stark differences between the two tables. An example is that where SAPS reports that 94% of their stations have comfortable seating in the waiting area for victims, our office's finding reveals that only 33% of those stations were compliant. Secondly, as to the availability of first aid kits, SAPS reports that 67% of their stations are compliant in this, in this respect. However, our office found that only 46% of stations were compliant. Now, this next slide is a representation of deficiencies highlighted at different stations visited throughout the province. If I can draw your attention to the second slide on the first row, which shows Claver SAPS, where it shows that this 
building or victim-friendly room is devoid of any burglar bars. Below that, you have Rafi Sona Ent SAPS, where it is poignant to note that there is no comfortable seating um, for victims of crime to the right, Kwaboseps, that is the same, void of any comfortable seating for victims of crime or those people interviewing the victim. So the next question to ask is, are SAPS members sufficiently trained in the implementation of the Victim Empowerment Program? Now, this table before you illustrates the training needs identified by the SAPS for the financial year 2018 and 2019. What this table sets out is A, the total number of members to be trained in terms of the listed disciplines, B, the tra training needs that province can address, and lastly, the total which is to be addressed by the national office. What is alarming to note on this table is that the provincial training needs are sorely lacking. For example, over 90% of members who have been elected to be trained for the National Victim Empowerment Training Program have not been sent for such training. With regards to the training of community-based community volunteers, this is regulated by and large by sec Section 15 of National Instruction 2 of 2012. And this confirms that training of Victim Empowerment Program volunteers is the sole responsibility of the Provincial Department of Social Development and not the SAPS. The SAPS, however, has a supervisory role with regards to the volunteers. However, such function may be delegated back to the Department of Social Development for assistance. I thank you. I will now hand over to my colleague, Ms. Suzette Jordan. Thank you, Ms. Dunn. The service charter for victims of crime in South Africa is an important instrument in the promoting of justice for victims of crime. It aims to eliminate secondary victimization, ensure that victims remain central to the criminal justice process, clarify the service standards that are to be afforded to victims of crime, and to make provision for compensation when such standards are not met. The service charter sets out seven explicit rights afforded to a victim, namely, the right to be treated with dignity and respect, to offer information, to receive information, the right to protection, assistance, compensation, and restitution. Our office conducted a close study on gender-based violence complaints received by the office from its date of inception. We interviewed complainants to determine whether they were informed of their rights in terms of the victim charter and whether the South African Police Service had upheld these rights. The following determinations were made as illustrated in, in Table 5. In general, there is low compliance. 71% of victims were neither informed of their rights to protection nor the right to be treated with fairness and respect. Paragraph 13 of National Instruction 2 of 2012 places a duty on members of the South African Police Service to provide basic support to a victim and to inform the victim of the importance of using such services. Table 6 reveals that over 90% of referrals are done verbally by either a SAPS member or a community-based volunteer. The South African Police Service indicated that the Victim Charter of Rights were provided 
to all cluster offices for distribution to this various stations. During the course of our investigation, it was vital to look at crimes against women and children, universally known as a vulnerable group. One in five women experience violence at the hands of a man. 25% of people in South Africa have experienced physical violence. 5% experienced sexual abuse and 45% psychological abuse. The 2017 state of policing in the provincial policing needs and priorities found that the South African police service are non-compliant with the Domestic Violence Act when it comes to performance of their duties. A possible reason for this is communities are not readily accepting of the South African, African Police Service in matters of domestic violence and do not trust the South African Police Service. Analysis by the Department of Community Safety highlighted the key challenge, challenges experienced by Caledon and Swellen Dam Saps. It is confirmed that incorrect information is often recorded in a respective domestic violence registers. According to National Instruction 2 of 2019, the role of the Family Violence, Child Protection and Sexual Offenses Investigation Unit is to ensure the effective prevention and investigation of FCS-related crimes and to ensure excellence in service delivery to victims of family violence, crimes against children, and sexual offenses. Our office conducted a close study on complaints registered against FCS. Table 7 illustrates the outcomes of victims' interactions with members of various FCS units. It shows no persons were informed of their right to compensation or their right to protection. A mere 20% of complainants were interviewed in a victim-friendly or private room. Thank you. I will now hand over to Ms. Lewis. Thank you, Suzette. During the course of this investigation, our office interrogated the victim support structure of international models. It was found that an independent charity services the needs of victims in England and Wales. The organization aptly named Victim Support has been in existence for the past 40 years and offers services to victims of crime. The services are rendered by skilled staff as well as volunteers before, during and after trial. These services are free of charge and available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Chapter 7 of the Victim Empowerment Program Manual sets out the manner in which it measures the success and effectiveness of the Victim Empowerment Program. This investigation revealed the inefficiency of SAPS in regards to the Victim Empowerment Program in the Western Cape. The 2018 Policing Needs and Priorities Report highlighted some challenges faced by victims. This includes a lack of capacity within the South African Police Service, poor Chairman, investigation. They moved the screen now. We can't follow it. They moved the screen too quick. Thank you, Member. Thank you, Member Marie. To the Office of the Ombudsman, are you able to go back one slide and then just carry on per normal? I trust that that will be in order for Member Marie. You may continue. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. The investigation. Let me just find my spot. I'm sorry. I will need to go to the next slide. There. Chapter 7 of the Victim Empowerment Program Manual sets out the manner in which it measures the success and 
effectiveness of the Victim Empowerment Program. The investigation revealed the inefficiency of SAPs in relation to the Victim Empowerment Program in the Western Cape. The 2018 Policing Needs and Priorities Report highlighted some challenges faced by victims. They include a lack of capacity in the South African Police Service, poor investigation, and a lack of proper monitoring and evaluation. The investigation further revealed that despite the adoption of the Victim Empowerment Program, Structural requirements are met, but no implementation takes place. There is a clear lack of resources and manpower. There is also a great need to strengthen relationships with NGOs. Further, it would be ideal to have dedicated victim empowerment program coordinators within SAP. SAPS highlighted their own recommendations and challenges as experienced by themselves. They have listed it as follows. The difficulty ensuring the, the availability of victim empowerment program volunteers at the stations, since this is not a compulsory thing. The misconception that VEP volunteers are professional counselors. The fact that Department Social Development offers psychosocial counseling makes the victim-friendly rooms at SAPS redundant. VEP coordinators are not employed on a permanent basis. And further, the visible policing sector commander training should include the victim empowerment program training. On conclusion of this investigation, investigation, sorry, it was recommended that the Provincial Commissioner of SAPS take action to address the inefficiencies identified by SAPS, the inefficiencies highlighted in this report, and this includes the uneven application of the National Instruction 2 of 2012, the lack of training of SAPS officials, and it was further recommended that a memorandum of understanding be reached between Department Social Development and the South African Police Services. Furthermore, it was also recommended that referral of victims to service providers be done in an alternative method. I thank you. Thank you so much to the Office of the Police Ombudsman. Mr. Brandt, is there any further remarks that you would like to make at this time? Yeah, thank you, Honorable Chairperson. No, I, I'm, I'm fine with the report. This was the findings of the report. There's nothing else that I can remark. So. Uh, we will be happy to respond to questions from from the committee members, uh, from yourself, and then also um, if, if if additional comments or clarity is needed. As you said, we have circulated the report to to the committee as well as um, to the um, to the, the MEC and to the South African Police Service, and we've also subsequently have circulated the same presentation. Uh, so thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, we will respond as there is any need for us to do. Thank you. Thank you so much, members. As per the briefing, we can all know that any policing inefficiencies in terms of the victim-friendly rooms and the victim empowerment programs can then lead to secondary victimization. And it's been well established that any secondary victimization can lead to an increased post-traumatic stress, but also even the decrease the likelihood of reporting crimes in the future. Obviously, as a standing committee on community safety, it is incumbent on us to monitor whether the inefficiencies identified are addressed by SAPs in the Western Cape. 
It is now 9.40. Our notice to the South African Police Service informed SAPS that the meeting will be commencing at 9 o'clock with a briefing from the Ombudsman, which will go until 10.15. Thereafter, it will be a response to the recommendations made, which will uh, which will then go from 10.15. We have afforded SAPS the courtesy to join from 9 o'clock. There has been some technical issues that they are sorting out, but seeing it is now 9.40, and I indicated earlier on that we will get a reply directly after SAPS, uh, after the Ombudsman's briefing, I would take your your input, uh, I'm leaning towards affording Ms. Evans an opportunity for input at this stage. And if it is not at 10.15 as yet, we will then go straight over for, in, for further clarity and questions directly to the Ombudsman. Is that in order, members? In order, Chair. Thank you so much. As I stated earlier on, we have with us Ms. Lucinda Evans, the Director of Pelisa Abafazi Betu Women's Center. She has emerged as a strong voice for women, not only here in our province, but in our country as well. She has lodged the complaint. Uh, I'm just monitoring if SAPS has joined as yet. But to Ms. Evans, thank you for affording, uh, for availing your, your time. This morning, I would give over directly to you for input to the committee during this time. As I've noted earlier on, there has been some technical issues in getting the South African Police Service um, online, even though I note that our notice to them indicated that we are in, um, anticipating that they would be responding at 10.15, but the courtesy has been extended for them to partake and to listen in on the briefing from 9 o'clock. But Ms. Evans, I give directly over to you at this time. Uh, good morning, Honourable Chairperson. Morning, Honourable Members. Um, thank you to Mr. Brandt and the investigators. A very good morning to you and everyone that is here this morning. Thank you for affording Pelisa Abafazi Betu Women's Centre the opportunity to be able to, to give our comments. I want to categorically state to the members that our organisation is non-partisan. The fact that we lodged the complaint, um, started off that we first engage with the South African Police Service Provincial uh, Commissioner already in October of 2019. And we flagged to the Provincial Commissioner at that time our deep concern about services generally for victims of gender-based violence. Uh, we were afforded a presentation which to us was, was quite shocking that on paper there is a VEP room, but inside of that VEP room, in some cases, there are no services. And therefore, as a group of activists, Belisa Abafazi, in partnership with One Billion Rising Women's Movement, we visited a few stations. And we found that when we visited the Ashton police station. It was the only police station that had a cell for an LGBTQ person or a trans person. Um, we also found that when we were at Tolbach police station, the detectives were using the VEP room because they had no office space. And our hand was forced to bring it to this level, honorable chairperson and members. This report is shocking but we as an organization is not surprised. The mere fact that SAPS is not here at 9 a.m. says a lot to us. 
And even though the courtesy was given to them that quarter past 10, the magnitude of violence against persons in this province and in this country should have compelled them to be here at nine. And this is the attitude that we need to deal with as civil society, the attitude that it's not important to be at a meeting at nine, the attitude that we have at police stations, for an example, Cryfontaine, where we have flagged numerous times when victims of violence go to that station. There is no services. But why at a station like Tableview this VEP service is in? It's correct. There is a referral path. There's a paper trail. There is the registers done. So why is it that one station are able to comply in terms of the victim's charter, in terms of feedback, but in other station, they couldn't care if it was a woman from the township, a woman from the informal settlement. So in my presentation, the question that I would like to ask to you, Chairperson, and the honorable members is how do we ensure that this recommendations that has been given is not going to be a fruitless exercise of a three hour conversation. Who is going to monitor the implementation of the recommendations of the police services and who will be giving us civil society the reports and the feedbacks? We have seen that there is no monitoring and evaluation. There isn't. We have seen that the training that was supposed to have taken place more than two years ago and some VEP volunteers, which we need to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts, I have had training three years ago. And this is the status where we find ourselves as civil society and as activists advocating for the protection of all bodies. My, my, my next comment is around the VEP volunteers and the mass exploitation of good-hearted volunteers that are in those stations, they do not get the necessary upgrade, the training, they don't get the capacity building, they're not even being stipend, they're not even getting the, the psychosocial support. And the psychosocial support, it is so important because you cannot work with trauma upon trauma and seeing the horrors and you do not get debriefing. And therefore you find that in some police stations, there are one volunteer, seven on the books. But in actual fact, if you walk in active volunteers, you will find one. I want to challenge the seven of Caledon. We were in the station. We know exactly how many active volunteers are there. And when I walked on the 26th of November in 2019, at 20 hundred hours in Predasdor police station, after I've done a talk and we, we were called about a woman that was uh, at the police station and she needed services. The police officer that night, I sat there, I went and I sat on the bench like somebody that was coming to lay a complaint and I heard the conversation, how there was no one in that victim support room. By the way, the station last year got an accolade for scoring the highest um, of services. There were no VEP volunteers and the victim were taken home where the perpetrator was drunk and abusive. The police officer said he's going to speak to the husband. And so bringing this complaint to this level and to this committee, honorable chair and honorable members, we have a situation that the rights of persons that are victims of gender-based violence are over and over and over violated. There are no feedback. And in some stations, yes, they have a, a good referral pathway and others, they are nothing. And so when victims, for an example, in late November of, of 2019, a rape survivor walked in at the Athlone police station on a Saturday afternoon at 4 p.m. And she told the officers that she was raped. And the Sunday at 3 p.m. I received the call, the victim was still sitting 
on that bench and I called the general of the cluster and I said to the general that I'm on my way with my team to that police station. The general did the intervention and did the necessary service. And if you go today back into Athlone police station, you will find that there is no VEP people. There is no one. There has not been recruited. There is no services for victims in that police station. I want to take it further and I want this committee to look at what is the South African Police Service's staff complement. Staff complement in terms of who heads the Western Cape VEP services. How many persons are there running the service, ensuring that the VEP um, rooms are working optimally? And I can answer you. It is the sole responsibility of one individual. One individual cannot run the entire province and hence it falls by the wayside. The provincial commissioner should take responsibility together with her team in ensuring that we have the fundamental right to protection and safety in place. We are not here to negotiate honorable chairperson and honorable members. As an organization, we are done negotiating and asking politely. The lives of women and children and persons, disabled persons, and the LGTBI, the first intervention of protection are police stations. The first level of seeking help is police stations. And if the first frontline service cannot provide us the service, then we as a province, the women in this province are in deep trouble. We're going to die. Some of us are going to die if the service is not in place. And so the question that I want to ask also to this committee, why has the, the deeper conversation between the Department of Social Development, Victim Empowerment Program, and the South African Police Service has not taken place? Because if I see in the presentation that the Department of Social Development province has a responsibility in, to ensure that these volunteers are trained and that these volunteers are getting the psychosocial support. And if this is not in place, what is the timeline that we, that I can expect or ask a civil society, when is this MOA going to sign, be signed? When will we see a new way of recruiting VEP volunteers in terms of getting them in the room? And then to the Department of Community Safety that is present in this meeting today. Is there not a funding module to have the VEP volunteers stipend so that we are ensure that this 24 hour service, seven days a week, 365 days a year is happening? We are able to stipend, for an example, the walking bus. Why not the VEP volunteers? And if the Department of Community Safety maybe doesn't have the funding, should we not ask the Department of Social Development? Because where we find ourselves as a country with the highest rate of violence against women and children, we cannot ask, but can we? We should be able to block the big holes that we have in terms of capacitating the VEP volunteers. And then the big, big, issue for us is the inadequate training of SAPS members in general around violence against persons, around the LGBTQ people, around the protection of children and how to deal with children that are severely traumatized that comes into a station. When you arrive at some stations, those critical interviews are done right at the desk and not in the VEP room. And if you go to certain police stations, honorable members, even go to your own police station, somebody will tell you the key is not available. And that is why the registries are not updated. And that is why referrals happens verbally and it doesn't happen the way it should happen with a referral letter. And critically, victims that 
are needing to be placed in an emergency safe house. They don't reach us. They don't reach the safe houses because somebody at the desk with an attitude, with looking at the person and saying, not you again, um, deciding that I've come with a bad mood to work, I'm not going to service a victim of gender-based violence. And this is what we are sitting with. And again, I want to draw the attention of the honorable members and you chairperson to the rural area. In the metro, we have advocates that will challenge and that will go to the station commanders. But where is the voices for rural persons, rural women, children, and the LGBTQ? And hence, when I wanted to draw the attention of the Ombudsman, we did Swalendam and we did Kalidan. But if we look at services around a particular unit, the FCS, the FCS in terms of how they work, how they get to the clients, how long clients must wait, um, rape cases. You, you find that we were in Sirius in December of 2019. We, we attended a court case of an LGBTQ person who stated to us that when the police came to collect him at the scene we, where he was raped, the police officer said to the victim that I'm tired, I'm going to take you home, don't bath, I will fetch you the morning. And the victim was fetched at 12 o'clock the next day to be medically examined. The FCS unit is a critical unit in the South African police services. They are under-resourced, they are understaffed, and in some cases, you find that the FCS unit do not respond after hours because they are not paid overtime. And I want to draw your attention, honorable chairperson and honorable committee members, at this huge gap in this fundamental service. Coming back to the VEP rooms, thank you again for giving me the opportunity to be able to highlight one of the biggest gaps that could save a person's life. But I want to ask the question today, how is the monitoring going to take place? Who is going to be responsible to ensure that the South African police services exercises their mandate? And what are the timelines for all of this? I thank you. Ms. Lucinda, uh, Ms. Lucinda Evans, thank you so much for your input. Our capable procedural officer have noted a number of your questions. Uh, also in terms of the monitoring directly after the briefing and the response from SAPS, the committee will be taking a number of resolutions and we will be able to then forward any resolutions taken directly to you. I firmly agree that SAPS is the initial point of entry uh, to any victim and the report is, um, is extremely extensive and your input is appreciated. Um, to the general major, Manje, thank you for taking my call. I see that you are online now. It is now one minute to 10. Thank you for joining us. We will be handing over directly to you, general, for the response specifically dealing with the report as per the ombudsman. Do I see you there, sir? Major general? Yeah, good morning, Chairperson and honorable members. Yes, sir, we are here and uh, we are here to, to, to partake in the discussions. Thank you so much. I'll hand directly over to you to speak to the recommendations and your responses to the report. Directly over to you, sir. Then afterwards, we will then go into questions and further input from the members, which will be directed to both yourself as the South African Police Service, as well as the Ombudsman, if any. Over to you, Major General. Thank you. 
Yeah, thank you very much, Chairperson and honorable members. I just want to confirm that uh, we did uh, study the report and we started the report with the attitude respect. General, I think you went on mute. We are unable to hear you. Or is it only me? No, yes, I couldn't I... hear him either. Oh, okay, okay. Are we on mute? I can hear you now. You... And there you go off again. Can you hear me now, Chairperson? All in order. Thank you. Yeah, what I was saying, Chairperson, I'm going to repeat it. I wanted to say to the honorable members, we have uh, received the, the report. We have started the report and uh, we look at the concerns that are raised in the report. Uh, we studied it with the attitude of respect and gratitude uh, with due regard to the mandate of the Ombudsman constitutionally. Now, the recommendations were saying we need to be addressing the deficiencies that were identified. Uh, in our response action plan, in if I may use that term, uh, there was the issue of the training of volunteers, the issue of the, like at Bridastop, it was reported that uh, there was one uh, a volunteer that was found there. So in that regard, uh, uh, we want to confirm that uh, uh, we agree with that. It does happen, Chairperson, that uh, 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 volunteers will be recruited and uh, over a period of time, they begin to be depleted. Some of them will get employed and some of them will just maybe decide not to proceed with the volunteer ring or some of them may relocate so the stations begin to lose the number that they've uh, re 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 recruited originally even if those people were trained over a period of time they will be lost so we did over and above that and we do, do respect also to the finding we did also look and uh, we found the were 32 uh, stations that uh, are in a similar condition. It is Lanesburg, it is Bella, it's Bevel South, Case River, Raven Smith, Kens Bay, Maitland, Cape Town, uh, and, 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 and Maitland, Cape Town, uh, Sea Point, uh, Table Bay Harbor, Woodstock, Berrydale. Kanungaba, Kali Stop, Kanogutula, Lady Smith, Kailicha, Tembaletu, Lindeletu, Luanda, Atlantis, Philippi, Nyanga, Samora Marshall, Bridasdo, Dorens Bay and Lambeth Bay, Mamrains Dob, Mbekweni, and Salmon's Town. So, cumulatively, those stations, we have given them a target of 20 people, at least uh, per station, to recruit. Uh, in order that we can have a turnaround in that area. So uh, what I'm trying to say, on that point, we, 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 we concur with the Ombudsman's finding, as also found by our own uh, uh, visiting officials that are going to the station. So the instructions are out. They are recruiting. It will total 640 people. And then uh, we will do doing the application to uh, the, the, the DSD, Department of Social Development, who facilitate the training according to the press scripts. Uh, in terms of the outstanding uh, volunteers that were not, not trained yet, we were having 231 that had to be trained before the COVID. So that 231 and these that will be recruited we are applying to the social development to assist us with the training of that so that uh, those stations will be replenished in terms of the numbers of the volunteers and also the training of them. Now, there was also an issue in the report uh, where we were 
uh, notified, according to the report, that uh, at one of the stations, which is by Dazdrop, the, 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 the sergeant was on leave, and then uh, he, there were books that were not available because the sergeant was not on leave. That is not the norm. The norm is that uh, there must be an acting person uh, in terms of the leave management by the station commanders. There must be an acting person who is prepared uh, before the person goes on leave. But we take it with the seriousness it deserves that it was found to be so in that station. To that effect, we have given instructions to the station commander in this province to ensure that uh, when uh, appointed coordinators go on leave, there is a person who is prepared to take over in the acting capacity so that there will be unbroken, continued and sustained service delivery in terms of vic vic victims of crime in all the stations. So we took it seriously and we issued instructions uh, that will be monitored in terms of implementation with consequential management if these things continue to, to happen. Uh, Non-compliance with the instructions uh, in terms of, is it colored on? And Bridastop as well, we have instructed the cluster commander to look at the issue of Bridastop because, as I say, as a norm, the station commander should have made sure that uh, the, there's continuity of service in that area. So why there was a breach, so we are giving effect in terms of investigating it. Uh, Brigadier Helbron has been tasked to investigate that matter, and uh, we will give feedback on the out outcomes in due course, etc. Uh, Non-compliance with regard to uh, Section 10 of Instruction 2 of 2012. This refers to the equipment that should be in the victim support rooms. Uh, we didn't study the report with the attitude to defend. We, we, we studied the report uh, with, with respect to the integrity of the people who did the inspections and also the office from where the report is, is issued. And uh, we have said to our station commanders, they must do an audit of the equipment in their victim support rooms so that they can see what is still in place and what need to be replaced and what is outstanding. And then uh, we are, in terms of that audit, going to ensure that things are up to standard. And then in terms of Section 11 of the National Instruction to 2012, again, all those that things that should be in place there, we have tasked the cluster commanders and stage command to ensure that uh, they will give effect to the sections, and there is consequential management if things are not done properly in, in that level of the stations. But we do this with the attitude uh, to ensure that there is full compliance to victim emp empowerment imperatives. Availability of the first aid kit. Uh, we have identified the stations that are running low in terms of the, 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 the running low in terms of our early warnings, uh, uh, the stations, and then we have issued instruction that uh, they must continuously adhere to the early warnings if their 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 stock is getting lesser, and then they must apply, and supply chain will process the application so that uh, there's continued availability of the. The, 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 the first aid kits in the victim support rooms. So over and above those stations that were identified by the ombudsman, we did also our own uh, visits, and uh, those stations that were identified, there's a replenishment plan being executed as we speak to ensure their service delivered there. Training of the, 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 training of the, 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 the the victim support room personnel, as we, we have said, uh, uh, it will be done, uh, Chairperson. Uh, the 321 plus those that will be recruited in those identified stations. In terms of the training of the members of SAPS, 
the national office has granted us 90 members that must be trained this year for victim empowerment, uh, 180 in this year that will be trained for Domestic Violence Act, and uh, 40 that will be for first responder sexual offenses, 90 for human rights, and then 180 for vulnerable persons. And uh, that training is offered by our provincial HRD, and we shall make sure that our members are trained uh, as we are getting the training quarters that we have received in this in this year, Chairperson. So that is part of the response action plan, which will be monitored and feedback will be given in due course according to the guidelines that we shall receive from the chairperson and the honorable members. Uh, the gender-based violence, victim friendly uh, compliance, uh, we have issued instructions already in, in, in June. It was signed by the provincial commissioner. We're enforcing that instruction to ensure that uh, there's compliance. Of course, where our members, they don't treat the people properly, where they don't treat the people properly, in contravention of the prestige, uh, consequential management will take place, and uh, those, the, the, those, the, and and there will be a redress of those wrongs that are identified. In terms of the follow-up, we have issued instructions for the follow-up on Blattenberg Bay cases that were mentioned in the report. Major General Reddy, who is the cluster commander there, he will uh, follow up on uh, Blattenberg Cast 66 of uh, July 2019, Blattenberg Bay Cast 66 of October 2019, Blattenberg Bay Cast 150 of uh, February 2020, Blattenberg Gay Cast 313 of December 2018 and Blattenberg Bay case 160 of March 2020. So we have given him a deadline of uh, September, September 20th for feedback in terms of those identified things that are reported in the, uh, mentioned in the report in order to, to deal with that and then we shall get feedback. Uh, secondary victimization that was reported in the in the in the in the report uh, in the applicable uh, clusters there is uh, uh, the issue of uh, uh, Gina Korchi of Swollen Dam and Janik Stein we have Tas Brigadier Tachana of Dagama cluster uh, to look into that matter and uh, to to investigate it properly and give feedback in the prescribed manner. And then the investigation of sec secondary victimization complaint as per uh, at uh, Langa, the issue of Samke, Brigadier Mabusha of the Cape Town cluster, he will also be dealing with that matter. Uh, and then we shall get feedback in terms of the outcome. I must in uh, indicate to the panel that I was uh, personally involved in the addressing of this issue of Langa when it was reported. And uh, it was really uh, unacceptable that people were not treated properly. And where people are not treated properly, General, Mike, you will Mike, mute oh. again, sir. Logical, uh, situation but we we are proceeding with the presentation with, with the feedback response to the ombudsman uh, uh, report then uh, can you hear me chairperson i'm all in order now thank you okay th thank you chairperson then there was also the issue of the anonymous rape survivor uh, uh, from kailicha as we are starting the report is from kailicha uh, Brigadier Hoskin is dealing with this matter uh, in terms of the investigation to look at the survivor so that we can uh, 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 deal with the situation, situation that she, she went through. Not the notification of the victim's right uh, 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 by the FCS, we have tasked Brigadier Harry and uh, 
and 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 uh, and uh, Brigadier Harry, who is in charge in the province of the the FCSS units in the province, uh, to to address the members and to ensure that uh, the 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 victims are notified what they are entitled to in terms of the service they are expecting to receive uh, in our victim support rooms. Uh, Chairperson, I, I, that, that, that will be the, 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 the report in terms of the, the, the response, in terms of the report, issues that were raised in the report on the Ombudsman. Uh, we have formulated a response action plan on them, but we shall also continue with our duties to ensure that uh, the, the victim support rooms are uh, up to standard and where shortcomings are identified even by our own monitoring teams are identified and uh, our supply chain will also be getting the things that we need to put in place as we identify and also as the ombudsman have identified we are receptive to uh, to, to criticism for purposes of improvement and that was the attitude chairperson in which we started this report. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much yes. General, for your reply. I have noted two comments, and um, as you would know, it is incumbent on us to monitor um, to, to monitor in this regard, especially with regard to the audit of the victim support rooms. We will be submitting that to get further information from you, but also with regard to the training of members in terms of when you envisage that to happen. But I will go directly over now for input and questions or any matters for clarity from the members. I have noted let me just open. I note Member Christians, Member Kama, Member Mare. Firstly, in that order, uh, Ms. Evans have noted your hands. I'll come uh, um, your hand as well. I will come back to you. But for the first round, I see Member Christians, Member Mare. Barnes and Kama. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, I think uh, it's just uh, basically a comment from my side. Uh, Chairperson, I'm audible, eh? I can hear you, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I think. Um, I think we always knew as a committee that this a lot of shortcomings and inefficiency when it comes to victim support and the rooms that we visited as a community safety standing committee. But uh, Chairperson, what I want to say is, um, listening to all the reports, I also want to compliment um, the general for his open heart and his attitude towards this, because this is a, a major problem. And, and we need to address this problem. I want to see uh, Chairperson E. And, and, and Ms. Evans has also alluded to this, that um, I see the attitude of SAPs uh, want to um, uh, improve the conditions of our victims. And that's important. Uh, the allegations, and they can give us a comprehensive report, says a lot about their attitude. But as a committee, I think it's important that we get the timeline from SAP, SAPs and that the measures, as the measures is put in place, that we monitor, monitor that um, for, on, on a regular basis. So, Chairperson, I think, um, and also the Ombudsman, uh, you know, for, for the recommendations and, and so on, and, and let, let us look at uh, the department, because I don't think we, we even ventured into this, but the Department of Social Services in uh, the province uh, where they need to play their role with it. And, and, and I think Ms. S says, said an important thing. I know people working in, in these victim support rooms, volunteers volunteering, 
we will always lose volunteers because they do not get a stud opportunity they leave and all the training that has been put into these individuals we lose it so it's not sustainable to get in people all the time because the general must also tell us how often does these people you know um uh, they alternate because they they if uh, they they get employment somewhere else they leave because what they're doing they're doing the out of the goodness of their heart but i think with so that is the but but i also think the important thing is that we must look at the training that our uh, social so uh, our, our our western cape social services must render to these people and these people working there they don't like Ms. Evans said they don't get any support afterwards debriefing sessions does not take place so we must also manage these people appropriately because they use their time to help us but i want to agree that we are sitting with a major problem that victims should be dealt with more professionally and that SAPs and the volunteers must be adequately trained in order for us to rectify this problem. But I am very glad, Chairperson, with the attitude of everybody involved, I think we can move forward. But it's all about now the timelines, monitoring and ensuring that the measures, that the recommendations is put in place. So when somebody is abused or somebody is raped, that they find a safe haven uh, where, uh, where they're going to and not again, uh, you know, molested or ill-treated afterwards. So I'm very glad and I'm very happy with the report, Chairperson, but I th think it's a positive note and we can move forward. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you so much, Mr. Um, Member Christians. I want to commit that we will definitely do that. I've, uh, I will now see Member Mare. Thank you so much, Chairman. Chairman, one thing I've learned over the years, and that's many years, is that South African government and departments, they are masters at compiling reports, but they always fail the implementation of those reports. It gathers dust on shelves in somebody's office. So I want to come straight to the point. I've listened to the general. Let's start with the problem. The problem is, what is the quality of men you recruit as policemen? Have they gone through psychiatric evaluations so that we can know what is their views on the role of women in society? Are they dispensable? Are they for fun? Are they there to be sexually assaulted and molested? Are they to obey the whims and fancies of their husbands? Who are they that is used to, to deal with victims, especially women or LGBT people. Do they do a probity check on these men before they became policemen? I want to ask them, what is the oversight? How can the police do oversight over police? We need an independent body that regularly visit police stations, regularly, I mean, at least once a month to check on the quality of they give to victim support and let them do the oversight over the police. Police can't criticize themselves. They'll never criticize themselves. They protect each other. And then I want to say, if we can't get this right after 26 years of democracy, with a constitution that guarantee the rights of individuals, the rights of women that, that protect the LGBT community. We have a constitution that protects them. And we're only now trying to find a solution to the problems we should have been found a solution for 20 years ago. What hope is there? The police at the moment are not viewed general by the public as a Boy Scouts movement. They, they're not Boy Scouts. You could see what happened in El Dorado Park, how they shot that boy and then hit the evidence. There's no way. There's policemen accused of rape. There's a lot of things wrong, and it starts with the quality of men. You recruit for policemen. And also, no man policeman should 
interview a woman rape victim. He shouldn't be allowed to get near them. We must make use of women to handle the, 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 the meeting and giving victim support. A woman understands another woman. You can't give that job to a man. For now, I'll stand back. I have already mentioned that when a woman reports abuse, the man should be removed from the common home. And I'm very happy that General Salebi has now supported my, my proposal that the man should be removed from the house and put somewhere in a tent where he can be removed and not the woman and children taken away from her, the comfort of her home and put somewhere in a tent or a shelter. That is one way to start it off. So I want to end off. General, thank you. This is not a reflection on all the police. They are brilliant policemen, loyal to their jobs, people we can trust. But generally speaking, the police don't have a good image. That should be corrected, and we should be more choosy whom we allow to be policemen or a lieutenant or whatever his title is. Thank you. Thank you, Member Marie. I see your experience. You, you may have referred back to, to the late um, General Salebi, but we are glad that General Mangi is with us today still, members. We also have our Ombudsman here in the Western Cape, who is also available for questions. Um, what I will do now is that I will note Member Kama, Member Barnes, and then I will hand over directly to SAPS for their reply. I will take a second round. And also, members, with your indulgence, I will afford Ms. Evans an additional two I'm sorry, an additional two minutes later on, just for any further comment from her side. We obviously appreciate the fact that she is here with us today. And to all the members, I want to state again that based on the report as presented by the Ombudsman, the case studies, the data um, and the investigation, the matter was found to be substantiated. And obviously, it is then recommended that SAPs in the Western Cape must then take appropriate steps to be implemented, uh, and that needs to be addressed regarding the inefficiencies. Hence, we need to then formulate our recommendations and our way forward. But I'll now see Member Kama, Member Barnes, and then directly over to you, General. Member Mare, are you able to lower your hand, please? Uh, Member Kama, I see you. Thank you very much, uh, Chair, and let me uh, welcome the presentations that were made and and, and, and indeed also thank um, uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Lucinda also for the work that she's, uh, she's doing. Uh, uh, quickly, uh, Chair, uh, I, I, I want to, to appreciate uh, what has been done by, by, by General Brand you know, of giving um, the capable women in, in his uh, unit to lead the presentation today, because I think that also contributes in changing the narrative of how men uh, view women in society, because women have not been given the opportunity uh, uh, also to show the, the, their, 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 their capabilities. So, so I really appreciate that. I want to, I want to ask uh, Chair, uh, on the on this issue of the, the, this data uh, collection, you know, it's very important as 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 it needs to guide our response uh, to these uh, challenges that we face. And I agree with with the report of uh, the Ombud that this is really a, a shocking difference in terms of their own. Uh, 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 data that they could gather and the data that was gathered by 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 subs uh, in relation to uh, uh, I think one was about the comfortable sitting around uh, the, the, the 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 victim uh, friendly rooms and the availability of uh, 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 kids and 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 therefore really want to want to ask. Uh, uh, Firstly, as to why, why, what is the response of subs in such a difference? Not only that, yes, we will do this, and but what is the response? And 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 also, 
what how how often and like I remember Marie Mar is raised how often are these visitations uh, conducted and 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 the time frames or deliberate effort therefore to 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 respond uh, to what has been identified without it uh, having to get to this stage of being uh, investigated by an ombud and and, and 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 recommendations being made but as a part of a day to day and the operation of 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 of, of subs to ensure that uh, all what was supposed to have is in place in order to assist the service that were given to 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 the people at the end of the day. The other question I have, uh, Chair, is 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 it's it's, it's a pity, uh, Chair, that we we don't have DSD to 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 really also have an input around this uh, uh, the the findings that are made, uh, because if you look at the report. You you find instances where like the training we were told that DSD uh, uh, will be doing the training, and and perhaps get to understand how is DSD also assisting subs with the social workers that it has. I I I, I don't I don't blame uh, uh, I, or let me say uh, it is expected that from time to time, even if we can recruit two thousand tomorrow, but from time to time because these are volunteers. It is expected that the, the 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 number might decrease, and especially in relation to the unavailability of jobs and 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 all that. Then we find people volunteering, and also understanding that the the spirit of volunteerism in South Africa is really uh, 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 dropped, and and it is because people do not uh, 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 sufficiently have the means to 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 earn a a, a living. Uh, the last question, Chair, uh, 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 is on um, the, the the training. The report says, uh, I think in the 20, is it 2019, 2020 financial year, it says that there were no members, zero members were trained uh, on FCS and and and, and other uh, courses that it, it mentions. That there were not no members trained, and and this is really worrying, uh, uh, Chair. Uh, understanding the rise uh, in in the in the in the in the in the in the cases of children that are uh, um, uh, 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 sexually violated. Maurice Beck, you have an issue. Firstly, there was an issue with FCS in the case of the three-year-old and the four-year-old a matter that was dragging. Many other communities are complaining about the accessibility of the services of FCS because you would find that maybe an area as far as, um, uh, 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 let's, let, let me say, uh, 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 Woosley will be using an FCS that is really far away. A, a unit will be located far away, hence the expected delays in the unit reaching the person. So there should be a a a a a a a, a deliberate, deliberate effort in training now to say there was uh, no one trained for this it's really a, a a cause for concern we note the 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 the, the indication of those who will be trained uh, in this financial year but if we can really get a clarity on 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 this and perhaps get an explanation chair on table four table four it 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 be explained because as I, I read the table I could not really find an indication of how many were trained how many and uh, 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 were not were not trained but I got a sense of the 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 the, the, the needs or uh, that I identified the training needs that I identified and an indication of whether a commitment uh, 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 will be made by the province or uh, or an, or an expectation, expectation, I mean, not a commitment uh, that it, the province or national, uh, but not really a sense of who was then uh, uh, trained. Uh, thank you uh, very much, Chair. The departing comment, uh, I know I've been long, Chair, is that I also want to appeal, Chair, to, 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 to everyone, you know, the NGOs and everyone, that yes, we must we accept that there are challenges within SAPS. 
And it is true that our people in other se sectors of our society are, are, are losing the trust against subs. And we must be worry worried about that, about that and, not, and not add to that, that more of our society then become uh, frustrated. Because really the attitude that is being displayed now at the, at, the, at the leadership level of subs is an attitude that seeks to say, let's work together and fix, admit the challenges that we have, but let's work together to fix them. And, and, and now we, those who are in leadership, who, are, who have a deeper understanding of all these things, have a responsibility to work with subs, mobilize communities, go down to the ground and make sure that all of us seek to work to resolve the challenges that we have in our systems and make sure that it really better serves our people. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you so much, Member Kama. I agree with you. As I noted earlier on that, that secondary victimization can potentially lead to a decrease in even reporting crimes in the future. Hence, I can fully understand and appreciate your comment. Members, there will be a second round where I will request more concise um, questions. I have noted, um, based on Member Kama's comment, that there may be a question directly to the Office of the, um, of the Police Commissioner. And I want to echo the sentiment of the females leading the presentation, but also a very thank you to Ms. Nadia Arabi, who is also always helpful to our, um, to our committee. I'll give over to the Ombudsman as well as the General and thereafter, there will be a second round. Uh, uh, there will be a second round of concise questions, and I will then note Ms. Lucinda Evans afterwards. Over to the ombudsman, firstly. Um, thank you very much, honourable chairperson, and uh, the committee members, also for for the comments that were made. Um, Yes, I, I just want to also echo what was uh, said with, uh, from, from uh, General Mangi, uh, specifically on the attitude of the South African Police Services. You will remember when I took up uh, this position two years back, I said one of my goals that I want to achieve is to ensure that we address the systemic problems and that we can work with the South African Police Service in achieving this. Now, obviously, with our constitutional man mandate and my powers, uh, I'm, I must do the investigation. I must point out what I find in the investigations and then my constructive recommendations that will assist the South African Police Service that we can, um, that we can uh, uh, achieve this. Uh, Honourable Kama, uh, I think, uh, and Honourable Christians, uh, you've also only made comments. Uh, Honourable Kama, I just need to do uh, one or two of the areas which you've identified. The, the first one, uh, you want an explanation on, on Table 4, on page uh, 13 of the report. Uh, yes, um, you will see that the, the first column uh, in the different uh, graphs is an indication of the of the needs. So if we look, for instance, and you've raised the, the issue of FCS, we said that um, in terms of file, uh, the family violence, sexual offences and child protection course, there was a total of 15 members that indicated that they wanted training in this regard on the skills audit. Um, the data that we were provided by the South African Police Service, you will also see that data that we requested is attached as annexure one to the report. And on that report, they've indicated that zero members attended uh, that specific FCS course. One is the one where the national office is, respo is responsible for training. So in most of the instances, you will see the three columns. The first one is the, the training needs. The second one is the training provided in the, in the province. And then the last one is the national one. Um, then also um, the comment made by Ms. Evans concerning FCS, she asked that the Ombudsman must, must uh, look at that on the FCS response times to rape incidents. Unfortunately, Ms. Evans, 
we didn't we didn't include this in this report because it was um, judged to be outside uh, of this investigation. This investigation focused specifically on the VEP. And as the committee is aware of, I've raised it previously that we are currently looking at amending the Community Safety Act in order for the Ombudsman to also have uh, the powers to initiate the investigation, and it might be there. So I think that's all the comments that's, uh, that's applicable on me, the um, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ombudsman. I now note the General. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much to the honorable members. Uh, concerning the question of the timelines by honorable Christians, uh, we want to report that uh, what I was uh, talking from was the action, uh, was the response action plan, and those instructions that I was referring to are already issued to the station commanders and the cluster commanders. And uh, also, I want to say, because this is the work that we are doing already is continuous improvement in terms of uh, the services and what should be in place there. So those audits, uh, uh, instructions are with immediate effect. We have given them the 20th of September to come back to us so that we shall know exactly what is in place in those stations and what what need to be uh, what need to be uh, uh, replenished or improved or renewed uh, from those audits that we have issued uh, it, it, it's, it's with immediate effect and then we shall be monitoring our plan monthly and we shall making sure that uh, the sustained uh, uh, service delivery and maintenance of uh, uh, equipment and systems in the stations uh, to the Honourable Mares question, if the police are subjected to the test, I want to confirm, Honourable Member, that the, yes, the members are subjected to the psychometric test, and uh, they are also trained on this at the college, the, the new ones that are coming out of the college. Uh, also, it is a norm that uh, the victims of crime uh, should be dealt with in the in the in the in the victim friendly facility and female uh, members of society should be interviewed by the females so that is actually a standard that uh, we uphold and then the behavior and professionalism of our members that we have spoken about uh, and the code of conduct uh, we apply it and that is why also in the big uh, ceremonies like in Bezos with community, we always read the code of conduct so that our members, they, they get to know that the, the society is informed of the standard of behavior that is expected from us as members of SAPS. Uh, deviations from the norm, uh, we address them by investigations and the necessary steps are taken accordingly according to the merit of each and every case. Uh, we commit that we shall continuously improve to ensure that our members are treating the people properly and they are also behaving themselves, honorable members. To the question of honorable uh, Kama, in terms of the, my, 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 my question will, my answer will be that uh, we have got now Brigati Matumbo at the province. She is uh, uh, appointed into the post of provincial head. She is responsible now for the for this aspect of work. She is the one that will be going with the investigating teams to ensure that uh, the standards uh, are up to standard and, and shortcomings are addressed as well. As I said earlier on, that the work of the Ombudsman is an opportunity for us to improve. That is our attitude. And uh, all of our efforts cumulatively will make sure that there's quality service that we achieve towards members of society who reported the police stations. Uh, the duty officers as well, they'll be visiting the stations to ensure that uh, with a checklist, 
to ensure that uh, things are up to standard there. Of course, there, must, there will be a, re a replenishment plans on things that get exhausted so that there's a continuous supply of the services. Uh, the training of our members, uh, I want to report that uh, in the last quarter, uh, we had uh, 1,620 members up to up to that quarter that have been trained, 1,620. Uh, it was uh, 26 in Buford, Buford West Cluster. It was 127 in Blue Downs Cluster. It was 133 in Cape Town, 78 in uh, Dagamascope, 141 in Eden, 146 in Kailicha, uh, Milatin is 83, Mitchell's Plain is 127, Young 119, Overbeck 67, Tigerbeck 128, Friedenberg 57, Friedendal 30, Winelands 123, Worcester 109. That is victim with regard to victim empowerment. And Winebeck 126. So as I've reported to the committee earlier on, that uh, we have received some training commitments for this province, and we shall make sure that our HRD are really providing this training because it's very important in terms of the victim support room. Now, in terms of the, the volunteers that we have in the province, we have got 872 active volunteers. Trained is 649. And as I reported, that there's an outstanding training on, of 231. That is where we are, we, are, we are busy with that action plan to make sure that uh, the DS, DSD will assist us and the rec recruited one also will be trained. That will be the feedback, Chairperson, in terms of the, the, uh, the, the, the training needs. Uh, we did not bring uh, our Brigadier Harry of the FCS. She's also a female. But next time when we come to this session, she will also be here. Uh, but uh, they, there is also training of our members at, that has been given to members of the FCS uh, to ensure that they are also up to standard person. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, General. I now see a second round of questions. If any member feel that they have not had an adequate reply, I will afford that member the opportunity for a follow-up question. But let me just open up. I firstly see member Barnes, member Bosman, and then member Mare. in that order. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I must say that I realized that you didn't want to call me today, maybe because I'm a female, and Gen General Brand would correct you by saying that uh, I'm very into the the, the, the betterment of, of, of the lives of women. So I think I was the first one to be speaking. Uh, but regardless, Chairperson, my first comment would be on Pilisa Abafa's to organization. I want to thank them for bringing us to this topic, as we know that uh, government at this at this hour, on the different spheres of government, we agree as different political parties also that uh, gender-based violence is not a norm and it can be treated as such. Um, and then I want to go to, 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 to the ombudsman himself. I want to join hands with the speakers that spoke earlier by saying that at this stage that it's better for women to speak for themselves and the way the case is handled by, 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 by women themselves. I'm quite impressed with the Ombudsman's office. Uh, my first question would have been on training, but I think I'm partly covered with General Mangle's response because he responded on, on training. What, However, what I want to know is the monitoring on training, training of victim support personnel, how would that be happening? Because when I went through the report itself, there were huge numbers indicating a huge backlog on training. And General was reading out numbers now. But what I want to know moving forward, yes, numbers have been read out. But if you match them with the report, there's a huge gap and a difference. Um, what will be done to monitor that 
the actual amounts are brought into life. And then my second comment rather would be, also when I went through the, the report last night as I was reading, I'm not sure if it was within the work of the ombudsman or, or should I put it rather as a question. A concern that came to mind was that you, this is a part where it's it, it's actually treated like um, um, it's a volunteer. And I hear also my, my, my fellow members when they make their comments, it's like, um, I don't know how to explain it, but but the 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 the, 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 the general uh, how do I call it this GBV part is treated to be um, a volunteers the volunteers are accountable for 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 checking uh, cases and how things are happening the comfort and so forth I think from where I'm sitting that as SAPS this should be a department that is having a designated person an official from SAPS. And I see that the ombudsman did not show us that for the different uh, uh, police stations um, who, are, who is in charge of, of dealing with, with this specific issue of gender-based uh, uh, violence. So one would like to see a designated person for who will be relating to you when you come in, because I must agree also at some police station, I think one member or, or rather from the presentation, somebody said that the office is closed. I also came in personally into one office where I was looking for victim support. They were looking for a key and we could not find the key. But the point is then it, it says immediately you are, you are picking up a leg that this is not the office really that is prioritized. Maybe it's something SAPA should be looking into with a, with a vigilant eye. Then my last comment then would be to the Ombudsman's office. I think it has to do with FCS complaint. There was a comment made by saying that incorrect information is registered. I would just like to know, because I'm not a police officer, when you say that incorrect information is, is registered, what are you meaning? Can you just give me an example? Because I want to match it with the report itself. I thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. I see Member Mare, a quick and concise question or comment, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Chairman. I will be quick and concise. I would just like to know, I asked a question about uh, independent oversight unit. Uh, I did, if, if they did respond to that, uh, then I am sorry if I didn't hear it. I praat van a rondgaande inspectoraat. It is a continuous inspectorate or inspection unit that acts to satisfy the public that victims who report crime receive the same protection of the law as the criminals. You know, General and, and the and Ombudsman, the criminals have so many people betting for them. Human Rights Commission, legal resource centers, they run around, my rights has been uh, infringed. I was smacked by a policeman. I was pushed around by a policeman. Um, uh, so the, the, the criminal, he is being protected. Don't worry about him. I want to know about the victims because we talk about restorative justice, but there's no restorative justice here. Even if they kill me, they'll come out within five years. So do we need an independent oversight unit that protect the victims of crime? I haven't heard what you have to think of that because whoever the criminal is and whoever the perpetrator is at the police station, he can't inspect himself. I don't want a policeman to investigate a policeman's actions. And, um, and I don't want to give the Human Rights Commission and the, and the courts more uh, reason to throw the Bill of Right against me if we accuse a criminal then the criminal got all the protection of the law, but the victim got none. Thank you, Member Maria. I see Member Bosman. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, um, before I ask my specific questions, I perhaps want to put it to you um, that we arrange a joint committee meeting between the Community Safety Standing Committee and the Committee on Social Development where we ask both the Minister 
of Social Development and Minister of Community Safety, as well as the SAP's provincial leadership uh, to help us better understand the collaboration around victim empowerment and victim support, and specifically to understand the training and what the different roles are the two um, different entities. Um, and that moves me into my question. Chair, I want to ask from SAPS whether the training is, is it being paid for from the SAPS budget or is the expectation that um, social development automatically picks up the tab for the training? And then the next question to, to the general would also be what type of um, um, GCIS mapping is done on where um, specifically gender-based violence crimes are reporting. So what type of data is SAPS collecting in terms of sort of geographical information systems data that helps us to understand um, where the, the hotspots are and what the policing needs are, and also helps us to understand what the, the spatial characteristics of um, violence against um, uh, women, children, and people in the LGBTQI community is, because we know that the, the definitions that SAPs currently employ doesn't explicitly um, identify gender-based violence as a category. So how is SAPs currently collecting that data and using that data uh, to make the kind of policing intervention decisions that's needed and also to allocate resources. Thanks, Chair. Thank you so much, Ms. Member Bosman. I totally agree with you. That is one of our resolutions to call for that joint committee meeting. I'm just checking, Member Marie, if you can lower your hand. I'll firstly allow for questions and then I will close the questions directly afterwards, but then I will note Ms. Evans for any further concluding remarks for two minutes. So over to the General and to the Ombudsman. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, I would like to give the feedback in terms of the question of Honorable Ban regarding the monitoring of training. Uh, the training is, is, is offered by our training department in terms of the members on the inside. Uh, as I've read earlier on that there's uh, figures that we need to train in this financial year. We will be monitoring them uh, uh, weekly that the members are called up for training to the training sessions and that the station commanders are releasing those members and those members who must go for training must be assisted with vehicles so that they, they are part and parcel of the said training sessions and, uh, and, and also they succeed in terms of uh, uh, learning and coming back to apply the knowledge they've gained in the training sessions. Uh, the training of uh, the volunteers, uh, it is funded by Department of Social Services. We recruit the volunteers and then we apply uh, uh, to them and then they provide the training and also they, they get the service providers who, 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 who render that service uh, of, of, of training the members. In terms of the, 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 the data, we are using the, 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 the information that we are getting from our crime stats office at this stage in terms of the hotspots. And uh, we are also uh, in the process of improving uh, in terms of doing things. Our, our General Sikukuni, Sikukuni at National Office is currently helping us to ensure that uh, uh, the gender-based violence issues are properly uh, accommodated, as they should be accommodated, as the honorable members were saying. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Mr. Brandt, any further comment from you on any comment or remark that was made or specific question? Yes, Mr. Chairperson, yeah, I think, um, I just need to to uh, refer to what was the first one that um, uh, 
uh, uh, Mrs. Bunce, uh, Honorable Member Bunce, um, asked about that she doesn't see anything in the dedicated uh, of dedicated victim empowerment coordinators. Uh, she will see that that's one of our recommendations in support of the recommendations provided by SAPS. Uh, and, and it's on page 21, the second last bullet, where we've indicated that VEP coordinators are not employed on a permanent basis. So, because that was one of the one of the uh, recommendations of it by SAPS, where they've indicated that these VEP coordinators also have other functions to perform. So there's not a dedicated person to do that. So, um, so I think that that is addressed in the report. Um, the second issue raised by uh, again by the honourable member Bunce was in connection with the incorrect information that she picked up and she wanted that to be explained. I'm going to ask Ms. Dunn, the investigating, the lead investigator, to just explain that as you can hear it from the horse's mouth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you, Honorable Barnes, for the question. Um, in coming to the conclusion of information being captured <clears throat> excuse me being captured incorrectly we looked at doxa's census survey for the financial year of 2018 2019 and laid specific emphasis on caledon saps as well as swellendam saps now with regards to caledon saps therein it was confirmed that incorrect information was recorded in the domestic violence registers and this is uh, SAP regist registers 508A and B. Um, furthermore, the pocketbooks of the members also captured incorrect information pertaining to the victims of the crime and the nature of the crime which is being um, 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 recorded. Most concerning is that the contact details of the victims of domestic violence was often omitted on those registers and the pocketbooks alike. Now, when we look at Swell and Dam SAPS, the only pertinent challenge that was exper experienced there is uh, one of a ling linguistic concern, where predominantly the la language of choice or the primary language used in that district is Afrikaans, and that often sees some members of the community sideline or they are, it, they are unable to express themselves as to what it is, what they want to do at the, at the police station. And this can lead to misinformation. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. Members, I trust that the question and input time has been exhausted from your side. With your indulgence, I'll allow two minutes to Miss Lucinda Evans, the main complainant in the matter, in a matter that has been substantiated. We obviously appreciate her for being here. I see Miss Evans. I note you now. Uh, Chairman, just to note that I, I think we all know now that the police refuse to answer my questions. They only answer easy questions. Thank you so much, Member Marie. Uh, I do know that there is, um, in terms of IPAD, in terms of the independence of the of the office of the um, of the provincial police ombudsman here by us as well. But I'm sure that we will get that in a written reply for you, sir. If that's in order for you, I abide by the ruling of the chair. Thank you so much, Member Marie. Uh, Miss Evans, I note you. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Um, thank you, General Mangi, for your your feedback and your report. I think one of the things that um, we would also like to recommend as Palisa Abafazi is that when the community police forums are up and running again, that within that mandate, General Mangi and the representative of the Department of Community Safety that are here, that you need to relook at your policy with regards to have a dedicated gender desk from the civil society 
representative on your community police forum because it is okay for us as civil society to complain, but we too have a role to play. We have a role to play in supporting the South African police services, whether it be being on that committee, making services available, working hand in glove with the VEP coordinators station level or with the visible people. And there's a gap currently that we do not have functional CPFs in the Western Cape. And I understand all of those things and it will be coming soon. But also that civil society, we have to take your hand. It is not where we are here to give SAPS a hiding today. It is here for us to collectively pull our resources together to ensure that all lives are safe. Uh, thank you also, Chairperson and the honourable members. I would like to propose that we also work closer with the Department of Community Safety in terms of their resourcing that is available. Because I can understand when it comes to training, when it comes to capacity building, everybody is going to look at what is available within budgets. And that budget question could be the delay of training taking or not taking place. Violence is not stopping because budgets are not available. So I hope that we, as police Abafazi, can report back to our structures that things will happen within the allocated timelines. And we would really like to be updated as to how far things are. We've got activists in areas and at stations. And because of the advocacy at the level we have taken, we're having station commanders currently very upset with us. But again, you know, Manli, I, I, I want to say to all of you, it is not all station commanders. And we are not prepared to work with station commanders that is upset. This is not a personal issue. We are not fighting with an individual. It's about the protection and the lives of all women and all persons in the province. Thank you. Ms. Evans, Director, Police Abafazi Betu Women's Center, thank you so much for your input and for the initial complaint that you have taken up with the Office of the Western Cape Police Ombudsman. Members, on that note, it is now seven minutes past 11. I trust that we have exhausted our input and question time to the relevant entities, namely SAPS, as well as our Western Cape Police Ombudsman. I will now wish to thank the Ombudsman and his entire team. I wouldn't want to miss out on anyone's name. Ms. Lewis, um, Ms. Foster, Ms. Isaacs, um, maybe you must help and assist me, Ombudsman, and Ms. Brown, also to Ms. Arabi, who I believe is taking on a new venture. We wish you well. Uh, my apologies if I missed out any person within the, I'm just trying to check the names, but thank you for your presence here and for your commitment towards ensuring that not only are we creating a safer Western Cape, but also for this committee in order for us to hold in in order for us to do our work in terms of monitoring, but then also to be held accountable. I see you, Mr. Brandt. Yes, Mr. Chair, no, no, uh, Ms. Jordan is the other one. And then the lead investigator was Ms. Dunn. I think you've, uh, you, you've missed the two of them and that's, uh, that's the other two. And then Mr. Matwa, obviously one of, one of our main uh, investigators that is also present uh, and mm. um, uh, that's the people I think you've missed, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you so much for the clarity. Um, so sorry, Ms. Dunn and all the others. Um, Ms. Uh, Member Barnes already accused me of missing her. So thank you so much for your presence to the General. Always good engaging with you and for your demeanor in engaging with us. We will definitely be taking resolutions and action steps in this regard and will be engaging your office in due time. Ms. Evans, again, to you, thank you for your effort and for engaging with us.
today to all other guests, members of the public that is watching via YouTube, any other guests that is here, to our procedural officer, to our IT support, thank you so much. To the general and to Mr. Brandt and his team, and to Ms. Evans, you are now excused. But again, thank you so much for your availability today. The committee will stay behind in order to deliberate and to take action steps moving forward. But you are now excused. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you, Mr. Brandt. Members, if we can stay behind in order to conclude our deliberations during our committee meeting, a number of resolutions has already been stated in terms of Member Bosman's one. Uh, I listed one or two. But what I will do is, and Mr. Christians as well, what I will do is that if we are able to flesh it out via email and within the next 48 hours provide that to our committee coordinator, to our procedural officer, uh, or is there anything that you would want to list now just for discussion quickly? Chair, if I may. Yes. No problem. No, thanks, Chair. I, I, I just wanted to, to indicate that um, my, my, my resolution uh, recommendations would have been captured in the, what uh, Member Postman uh, was proposing or, or, or indicating that there's a meeting that must be planned or is being planned uh, 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 that will have these three departments. Because really, we need to see how do we make sure that they effectively work uh, uh, to together to address these other challenges and the one you had made uh, because i'm also interested on what would be the outcomes of the audit uh, mm. uh, that the the, the 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 subs will be will, will, will be coming up with and perhaps if we can request a chair uh, in terms of a written uh, the document that general man was 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 speaking on which he says is an action plan uh, uh, if we can also have something uh, 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 written from subs so that we are able chair to have it uh, uh, and in future are able to uh, measure their response against what they would have developed as an action plan and by that we'll be able to effectively hold uh, them accountable for the promises that uh, have been made in the in the committee thanks chair thank you member kama um, i wouldn't want to give you work sir but may i request that you drop an email where you just explain that again i have jotted it down i wouldn't want to miss out on any wording would that be in order sir yes that's in order chair i will do that no, thank you so much um, i note member Mare. Chairman and members, I think we're busy with a very serious issue here. I'm not a member of this committee, but I take a very big interest in gender-based violence, even though that affecting the GBTI community. I, I, I do believe that I my question has not been answered, but it's serious. And I will rather then uh, table a, a motion with notice uh, on this issue which I've raised here. I know that I can't move it here as part of a resolution because I'm not a member of this committee, now the vote on it. But I'm only here because I'm seriously concerned about the spate of violence against people who's gay, against people who's lesbian, against women in general. I think it's so serious, such a serious issue. We can't just browse it over. We've got our own municipal police and if we don't get assistance from the national police, my motion will reflect on what can the municipal police, which we have upgraded to highway patrolmen and given them a higher status, what can they do in the fight against gender-based violence? So I will be bringing a motion with notice, and I do hope that members of this committee will be supportive of it. 
Thank you so much, Member Murray. What I will also indicate that you are a member of the provincial parliament and you are more than happy to approach any member of this committee um, should there be any resolutions that you wish them to put forward as well. Um, I look forward that to you as well. Member Bosman, I now see you. Chairperson, I, just, I was just going to ask what prohibits Member Murray from tabling that um, recommendation here. Um, as a participant in the meeting and as a, a member, I don't see how that should be a problem, Chair, because it's ultimately the members of the committee that, re that adopt mm. the recommendations and the resolutions. It doesn't matter who proposes those recommendations. Exactly, sir. I think that's why I, st um, I stated I will afford that to Member Mare as well. Thank you for, for that clarity, Member Bosman, and for agreeing earlier on with regard to a joint standing committee between social development and Department of Community Safety. Members, so I trust within the next 48 hours, our capable procedural officer will receive a note from you with any detailed resolution that you have advocated for here, just to put that in writing, just to make it easier for each and every one. But again, thank you so much for, for availing yourself and for being here. This is a serious matter. Last night, I opened up the annual report of last year. Uh, to quote, um, I wrote it down here, to quote on page 147, the annual report that we were presented with last year stated this. The Western Cape, uh, the SAPS Western Cape is proud to report that victim-friendly services were offered at all the police stations, which shows how important and vital our role is in terms of oversight. Uh, we've heard now that the complaint has been substantiated, which then means that what is the level of proudness that one can have in terms of the service. But thank you so much for being here, for attending, and I wish you an amazing day further. For those that are logging in at 12 to the WITS, all of the best, to the WITS training, all of the best. And again, Member Barnes, so sorry that I skipped over you earlier. I hope you understand. But members, please keep well and take care. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, Thank, you. Thank, you, Thank, you, Chair. Thank you for the invitation, Mr. Bosman. I will certainly start drafting on it. Thank you so much. Premier Murray. And by it, Antiphon's procedural officer was C. Matthews. Pleasure, sir. Thank you. Bye.